Shall we start our class? All of you, please type your rule number in chat box, please. This is syntax of word. Initialization, semicolon, testing condition, semicolon, agreement, or right? We have some sort of statement inside the for block, then followed by the next statement, right? This block I'm calling it as <coughs> for block. So the execution of a statement, how does it happen? First initialization will happen, the condition is going to be tested. If the condition is true, the control will be allowed inside the for block. After executing this for block, uh, where the control comes to increment or decrement, right? So after then again, condition will be tested. Again, if it is true, again you are allowed inside, then increment, decrement, then you know, condition is going to be tested. Like that, how long it will be in a loop? It will be in a loop until the condition is false, right? When the condition is false, uh, the control comes onto the next statement, right? So we'll see some more problems. Uh, to be solved using for loop, okay? Right up. Write a program to find sum of digits of a number. Okay. How do you find the sum of this number? Let us say, for example, you have a number 786. Finding the sum of digits is nothing but what? 7 plus 8 plus 6 equal to 21. Right? So, here in order to sum the digits, we need to get the digits separately, right? So we can devise a logic here. <clears throat> the logic is what said to be the problem solving technique, right? So here, I'm doing few operations. I'm doing few operations here. You can see. I want to divide this n with ten, and take the remainder out of it, not the quotient. In order to get the remainder out of the division, what operator are you going to use? Mod operator, right? So, what happens when you divide, let us say that number was 786 and you are dividing it with 10, then what was the remainder? 6. Yes. So, the last digit will be the remainder, right? Now I can accumulate this digit. So I take one variable to accumulate uh, with sum operation. It's said to be the sum of series, right? So some series kind of operations uh, have to start with initial value zero and the terms can be accumulated to the same variable which is started with 0 ok so here you can see what we have done remainder equal to n more 10 then you get 6 here sum is 0 0 plus 6 you got 6 in sum now if I reduce the number from 786 to 78 right where do I get uh, 78 Divide by yes, in quotient I'm getting. So I have to divide this number with 10, then take the quotient in n. So n will be reduced to what? 78. 
when n is reduced to 78 again if you perform the operation what happens what do you get you get 8 so earlier in sum it was 6 now it is 6 uh, sorry 8 6 plus 8 is going to be 14 here right again if i further reduce it by doing the same right when it, because now n is 78 right if i again divide it with 10 and get the quotient out of it i'll get 7 here then again i perform 7 more 10 i'll get 7 so i can accumulate that right like that i can repeat this how long until there are no digits left in the number right fine so i can probably repeat this uh, for how many times if the number is having three digits then this logic has to be repeated for how many times three times okay so if i have the number with small n digits okay small n digits then i can repeat this for how many times small n times right small n and capital n will be treated separately since c is case sensitive right okay so i can repeat this logic by putting in a loop uh, how many times i can repeat three times if i have to generalize it i can say n i less than or equal to n right if it is a three digit then this is going to be three times repeated since i have set of statements i need to give the braces here right so this hole is there in the fur block i can terminate this here right all i finish then i can terminate it right so this is the logic which i have devised here to find the sum of digits of a number right now if i have to write the program for the same or algorithm let us say how do i write the algorithm first you need to identify the variables what are the variables you have identified in this logic i small n capital n sum rem right so we can declare them as integers because they're all numbers right so i am writing here algorithm for the same sum of digits okay so here uh, the variables to be declared as small n i capital n sum equal to 0 and rm right so i've initialized all these variables which are required for my algorithm and then uh, what is the uh, here these two are the inputs small n and capital n small n is the number of digits and n is the number okay itself so first you can ask the user to enter the number of digits enter the number of digits you are going to read it through n right then you are going to enter the number so you are asking the user to enter the number with how many digits small n digits the digits which you have accepted before with the same number of digits the number has to be accepted so then the number is accepted in n okay now if you want to take a backup of uh, original number n i can have a temporary variable to be declared and then i can take the backup of the same right i'm taking t as a temporary variable so after I immediately accept the number i'm taking that number back up in t okay now the logic is i have discussed here this is the logic so you can copy as it is right in the algorithm as well so here the logic is for i equal to one i less than or equal to small n i plus plus right then inside this what is that we have we have rm equals to 
n mod 10 then sum equal to sum plus rm then n equal to n by 10 okay so this is what the logic we have discussed yes so yes. yeah so then what happens the result will be obtained in sum here right when you come out of this for loop where will be the result available the result will be available in sum so that you are going to print right print sum of digits of which number the number is lost when you come out of the loop n will be zero rather, right but we have taken a backup of the same in t so the number is written in t if you want to print the number also along with the result you can print here sum of digits of t okay is percentage zeros yeah so this is algorithm so just can write like this no issue fine in program will be writing about that, right is it clear now so you can then terminate the algorithm right algorithm you can write you know c like kind fine because this is the notation followed by goodrich thomas here you can use this uh, notation also uh, similar to c program itself you can see it in, uh, but uh, need not to follow the exact syntax if there are some syntactical mistake like semicolon missing and all that doesn't matter okay this is how you can write the algorithm for some of these but it, now if i have to draw the flow chart for the same how do i draw the flow chart fine Flow chart of sum of digits of a number. Okay. You start with start, right? Start is represented with ellipse. Then what is the next step here in algorithm? After you begin, you have declaration, right? N I N S U M equal to zero R E M T at all, right? So, the declaration will be done using the rectangular box. So, you can say uh, declare, you can write like that also, no issue, or you can just say n i n, right? n i n sum, okay? And uh, t r n as integer, okay? So this hole should be in rectangle, right? So the rectangular box I'm drawing here. What is the next step in the algorithm we have here? Print, enter the number of digits. Here you are accepting small n, right? So it's an input kind, right? And this is also input. Uh, I can combine both of them in a single box also, I should. So this is input of small n and n, right? So I say here, read n capital N, right? And as well sum to be initialized here, right? So initialization part I'm putting here inside the parallelogram. Okay. Okay. So this is the next step. This is initialization part. After you start declaration part, we have done. Next thing we have done is the initialization part, right? The next is the logic. This is your logic, right? So here, of course, before that you have something like t equal to n. You can do that. That is also kind of uh, initialization. So you can have t equal to n. Okay, next step is the logic. So how the for loop is going to be executed first the initialization part, that is i equal to one, right? So I am here taking a connector as A. Since my flowchart may not be accommodated in the same page, I want to move on to the next page. If I have to you know connect it with the next page, I use connector, so I'm using a connector here A. 
then I can go to the next page. Then I'm using the character here. Now, what is it? First happens i equal to one, right? I equal to one is going to be done. Then condition is going to be tested. If the condition is true, you will be executing this. Then the i implementation is going to be done. Then again condition testing. This is going to be in a loop, right? So I have to show that here with the help of flowchart. So first i equal to one, right? Then i less than or equal to small n is going to be tested here. Fine. If the condition is true, what happens? You have some set of statements to be executed, right? Because you are alone inside, right? You have these three statements to be executed. So you will be writing that. Fine. REM equal to n mod 10 sum equal to sum plus rm n equal to n by 10 and then you have incrementation as well fine after this incrementation also will take place i can combine in the same box if i want i can combine here right so this goal is in the rectangular box, right? Fine. So after this, where do you go? Again, you go for testing the condition. Yes, sir. So, yes. So here, when the condition is false, when the condition is false, you come out of this for loop and then you know, read the reason, right? Yes, sir. I'll again start it right from the beginning. You start first, then you are doing the declaration part, declaring all the variables required, then you are doing the initialization part, what all the inputs required you are initializing, and then you're taking the backup of n and t after that set 10. And then since your flowchart is exceeding from one page, you are taking a connector, and then with the connector, you are trying to connect your you know, next page flowchart run to the first page. Now the next step that you have to do here is to represent the for execution. In for how does the execution takes place? First the initialization, then condition is going to be tested. Once the condition is true, you are executing the for block and then increment again condition tested. Uh, no, when the condition is again true, you'll be allowed inside executing this, coming back to the increment and then going for condition testing. Like this, you'll be in a loop. How long? Until the condition is false. When the condition is false, you come out of the loop and then in the Result, right? That is what we are trying to here depict with the help of this flowchart, right? First initialization, the condition is tested, i is equal to n. If the condition is true, then you will be executing all the instructions available in the fur block. Then you are incrementing again, you are going for testing the condition, right? And again, the condition is true, you are again a loading side, you will be you know, incrementing and then condition again testing the condition. How long are you doing? Uh, you know, since this is a loop, I am, you know, I have given a loop kind here, right? So this is going to be repeated. How long? Until the condition is false, right? When the condition is false, you come out of the for block and then you can see you are printing the result, right? So here you are going to print the result. Print. Uh, the result is available in sum, right? I hope this is clear to all of you. Now you can stop the torture because your algorithm is terminated. So <clears throat> you can see here right from the beginning, I'd like to again recall, see, you are given a question here, write a program to find the sum of digits of a number. First thing what you do is you need to identify the logic behind. How can you do that? By analyzing the problem. So this is said to be problem solving technique, right? Once you understood, uh, you know, the problem, only then you can devise a solution for it, right? So once you provide a solution for it, that is nothing but your logic behind executing your task, right? So once the logic is ready, you can go for writing an algorithm, right? How do we write an algorithm? 
four basic steps as i have explained you at the beginning right? you will have to identify what all the variables required in order to execute it and then you have to identify their type then first do the declaration part first part comes the declaration then identify the input sort of it initialize the inputs that is the second part then your logic which you have devised for your problem to be solved right that is the third step then comes the output right the output display so you can see any you know c program will have these four basic steps and that will be in the same sequence right right declaration must be at the beginning and initialization next then you will have your logic uh, includes arithmetic logical operations and all such kind of operations you require then you are printing the output right so once the algorithm is ready you can draw the flow chart for the same using the flow chart symbols that will help any novice person to understand what is the flow of your program fine i hope this is clear to all of you now we can write the program for the same we can uh, write it in the uh, online compiler and try to execute the same okay so here i am opening the online compiler online gdb.com which you press in the url you will find the online gdb.com in order to log in for the same i just have to say login you can find the login button at the bottom left this is the, in the browser window since i have already logged in i have an account created for it i can directly log in through google plus so you can see my name available in the browser window fine now uh, one skeleton of the program always will be available you can straight away uh, start with the same skeleton uh, you can add your required code in that and then you can uh, while saving uh, you can give the name for the same as a project and then you can run it right so i am using the same skeleton which i have got here so now <clears throat> the first step declaration right you can see in algorithm what is the first step it was the declaration right declaring n i n sum equal to 0 r m t and all that right so i do the same thing here first int i comma small n comma capital n right here small n i am taking it for accepting the number of digits and capital n i am taking it for accepting the number and the number which i accept must carry the same number of digits which i have accepted in n okay that must be the condition n comma sum equal to zero i can initialize a variable at the declaration part like this also right uh, then I am having REM to hold the remainder, right? And then I want a backup for which I am taking T, temporary variable. Okay, so these are the variables I require. What is the next step I have? I am showing you how I am transforming the algorithm to program, right? You can see first thing after doing the declaration, I am accepting small n. Then I am accepting capital N, right? So I will do the same thing here. How do I accept? the value from the keyboard with the help of scanner. But before scanner, we'll be giving a printer to make the user to know what he has to enter, right? Enter the number of digits. What you have to enter here first? Enter the number of digits. And if here small n is an integer so what is the form specifier for it percentage d double quote comma wherein i have to accept in small n so ampersand small n right semicolon okay i have to again accept uh, capital n right and uh, capital n is what is the actual number so while you know user has to enter the capital n value he must have to know that he has to enter the 
number with these many digits with how many digits small n digits so enter the number i said with how many digits with percentage d digits right percentage d so here since i have already accepted n value right before this print of n must be carrying some value for example user has entered 3 for small n then the small n value will be displayed in place of this percentage so what will be displayed enter the number with three digits so now the user must has to enter must have to enter a number with how many digits three digits only right then i can after immediately accepting n value i can hold it in a backup p p equal to i can say n so then i can go for the logic so what is the logic here i can straight away copy it uh, you know this logic okay this is my logic for i equal to 1 semicolon i less than r equal to 3 semicolon i plus plus then inside so this, p equal to n yeah i have said no before for itself here yeah, p equal to n yeah okay sir now uh, inside the for what is that we have uh, the logic is rm equal to n mod 10 right n mod 10 Then, sir, i less than or equal to n n no sir. Yes, exactly. Small n, right? Small n. Good, sir. Yeah. Sum equal to sum less r e n, right? Okay. So what is the next step we have? N equal to n by ten. N must be reduced, right? n equal to n by 10 okay so when you come out of the loop you will find the result which you are going to print printf of uh, sum of digits of where is the number number available in t because the actual number we have taken in n initially but it will be reduced to zero when you come out of the for loop right i want to display the number as well from where i can take i can take it from t since i have taken the backup of the same before i have sent the n value to the logic in t so i can make use of that right so sum of digits of percentage t that is the number equal to percentage t so in first percentage d place i want the number number is available in t and uh, the result in the second percentage d where the result is available sum right got it so now the program is completed okay so let us first save the program give the name as sum of digits using for Save it now. Choose the language as C language because, as we know, that this compiler can be used. This online platform can be used for many of these languages. Fine. So we wanted to use C compiler out of this platform. So we have choose we have chosen C here. Then we say run. Okay. So you can see enter the number of digits is. You now this one is displayed i will increase the font size here it's already large and i think it is visible right to all of you but so i am here giving let us say yeah three three as the number of digits then what happens he will ask me to enter a number with how many digits three digits only let us say i have i am entering 786 
then you can see sum of digits of 786 i got as 21 so is it clear to all of you yes sir yeah so when say once it is saved you can see in my project this is been added rather, right so if you go to my projects you can see you can search here sum of digits of a number using for you can see it is available right so this way all your projects get added up in your account so any time probably before first internal or before second internal uh, we will probably check your account to ensure that whether you have done all your programs or not right so like this you can probably execute the programs fine i hope this is clear to all of you any doubts okay now let us trace this program tracing is also more important just see developing the logic is also comes only when you know tracing well rather right uh, i just wanted to verify fine i just wanted to verify this algorithm fine so by tracing you can verify the same okay so let me verify this i trace it so here we have these many variables n i n sum equal to 0 r m r m and t so i am taking all these variables here So the variables I have here is n, i, sum, r m, t, and capital N, right? Fine. So what is happening? <coughs> First thing is that happens is the value of small n to be read. Okay. So you are reading the small n value let us say small n value is read as 3 okay and you can see at the declaration part itself you have initialized some value as 0 so some value will be 0 and then you are accepting capital n let us say you are accepting the value of capital n as 786 which i have done it for the execution which i have shown before right fine sum is 0 small n is 3 capital n is 786 and we are taking the backup of this capital n in t right before we go for the logic right so t equal to n when you say what has happened here t also have got 786 now the for loop gets executed you can see what happens here in for loop i equal to 1 the logic of for loop is i equal to 1 i value will be initialized to 1 first so i value is 1 here then what happens initialize after initialization condition is going to be tested what is the condition here 1 less than or equal to small n what is the small n 3 1 less than or equal to 3 is true right so when it is true you will be allowed inside here so you will be executing these statements so when you execute this statement what happens rm equal to n mod 10 so what is n here actually what is n n is 7 yes 786 so when you divide with 10 and the remainder out of it will be what 6 6 you will get so rm gets what 6 here what is the next step we have here n equal to sorry sum equal to sum plus rm after you get the remainder you will be accumulating it to sum you can see here sum value is 0 and rem is what 6 so sum plus 6 sum equal to sum plus rem is 0 plus 6 we will get 6 here right now what is the next step that you have the next step that you have here is n equal to n by 10 yes sir n by 10 means what is n here n is 786 and n by 10 that means quotient quotient value what is the quotient value 7 8 so this 78 goes to 7 
78 will be now the n value because what is that you are saying here n equal to n by 10 the quotient out of this division will be assigned to n so here the quotient out of this division what is that you have got 78 which is going to be assigned to n then n value will be 78 not 70 786 okay got it so after doing this uh, after doing this, where do you go? You go for incrementation. I plus plus means I equal to I plus one, right? So I gets incremented, I value will be two here. Okay, so after the incrementation, what happens? You can trace it through the flowchart also, no issue. After I value gets incremented, that is I value is now two. So after that, again, you come back here to test the condition. Two less than or equal to three is again true, right? When it is true, you will be again allowed inside. When you are allowed inside, what is that you are going to do? You will be executing all this again. It means REM equal to N mod 10. Fine. What is N now? 78. So now what happens? What is the, uh, you know, REM value you are going to get? Now you get 8, right? Now you get 8 as the REM value. Yes or no? Because N is 78 now. 78 mod 10 will give you 8 in REM. Then you will be accumulating it to sum. Sum is now 6, but then you are accumulating it with REM. So 6 plus 8 is going to be how much? 14. It means sum value will be what? 14. Right. Sum initially, uh, sum before, uh, you know, before this, it was 6. Now it is 8 here. 6 plus 8, 6 plus 8 is going to be 14. So sum value will be 14 here. All right. So after this you have the next statement to be executed is n equal to n by 10. What is current n value? That is 78. So 78 by 10, what is the quotient you get? 7. It means 7 is going to be assigned to n now, right? So your n value will be 7, not 78 now. Okay. So after then, what is the next statement that you have? I plus plus. So I gets incremented, I value will be 3 now, right? So after that, where do you go? You go back to again check the condition. 3 less than or equal to 3 is again true. 3 less than or equal to 3 is again true. So you will be again allowed inside. Then what is that you are going to do? N mod 10. Now what is N? N is 7. seven. So yes. So when you perform the division out of it, 10 zeros are 0. What is the remainder you get? 7 you get. Got it. So it means now the remainder value is going to be what? Is going to be 7. Got it. So, REM got 7, REM got 7. What is the next statement? This REM has to be accumulated to sum. So, sum is 14, 14 plus 7 is going to be how much? It's going to be 21. Got it? It's going to be 21. Then next statement is N equal to N by 10. What is N now? It is 7. 7 by 10 means what is the quotient? You get 0. So, what will be N value now? It becomes 0. Got it? There are no digits left. All digits are taken away, right? And you have accumulated all that in sum. Fine. You got zero now. When you have no digits, you need not to further continue that loop, right? You should stop doing it. That is what exactly you are trying to do. So three digits have been taken before itself have been taken now. So now when I value gets incremented, what will be I value? I value becomes four here, right? So I value becomes 4. When again you come for the testing the condition, 4 less than equal to 3 will be false, right? When it is false, you just go to print the result, okay? You go to print the result here. So what is the result here? Sum. So what is its value? 21, which is nothing but sum of these digits, right? 7 plus 8 plus 6. Got it. This is how you trace. Fine. So when you write the program, I want all of you to trace the program. When you trace the program, you will be able to verify your logic, right? Is it correct or not, right? You are able to prove your logic that is correct, rather, right? So this will help you to build a logic for the new programs, rather, right? Fine.